right, so as I mentioned to John Roberts a few moments ago, 40 hits later on our military assets, how has the United States held anyone accountable whatsoever in this Middle Eastern war? So joining me now to talk about that and a number of other things, Alabama Senator Katie Britt, author of the brand new book, God Calls Us to Do Hard Things, Lessons from the Alabama Wiregrass, out on the shelves today. I will tell you, folks, I've read over 100 pages of it. It is a wonderful book, and we're going to get to it in just a moment. Uh, Senator, welcome to the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Larry. It is certainly an honor to be with you today. You're very welcome. Um, it's very annoying to me. Uh, 40 hits later, every day Mr. John Kirby goes in the White House press rooms, national security spokesman, talks about holding everybody accountable. But we do nothing. We've we do nothing. nothing. And I know you've been tough on this, and I wanted to get you. He did it again today. Mm -hmm. And my second fear is that there may be some breaches between the United States and Israel, which I would find to be unacceptable. Uh, absolutely. And I think you look at what President uh, Obama said over the last oh, few yes. days. Yes. We're seeing that. We are seeing the, you know, kind of internal protest coming out of the State Department. And we have to make sure that we say absolutely not. We are not going back to the Obama era. That's what Biden continues to try to make us do with an appeasement strategy. We've got to go back to Trump's bone-crushing sanctions. There has to actually be consequences for behavior like this. Anyone who thinks they're going to find a moderate to deal with in the Iranian regime is literally on a fool's errand. We have to make sure that we protect our troops, protect our safety, um, and also stand with Israel, stand firmly. When we said never again after the Holocaust, it has to mean actually never again. It doesn't mean never again when it's easy. It doesn't mean never again when it's convenient. It means never again. We have Hamas coming out and saying, Larry, we will continue to recreate October 7th over and over exactly. and over exactly. again. Yes, they uh, said that. W w that is absolutely the barbaric terrorist have to be eradicated, and that is the beginning and the end of the story. You know, you mentioned the Obama thing. I find that most curious, his... Um dog and pony show uh, on some media outlet um, saying every, everybody's hand is dirty in mm, this. Um, yeah. He was a guy who gave Iran billions and billions of unfrozen assets plus a huge uh, chunk of cash. And, of course, that went right into their investment into terrorism, which ultimately probably resulted in this conflagration we're seeing now, financing Hamas and so forth. I mean, how can a guy like Obama say that with a straight face? Absolutely. And the only people who have blood on their hands are these terrorists who mm. committed these barbaric atrocities and obviously Iran who funded them. And to your point, where did this funding come from? What do we think the result would be? We give people who chant death to Israel, death to America, give them uh, unlimited resources and just expect them to play nice. I mean, you look at Hamas, obviously we look at Iran, funding Hamas, funding Hezbollah and Lebanon, funding the Houthis and Yemen. We know they're funding and training them. Hamas has said that their goal is to eradicate the state of Israel. What we're seeing there, the anti-Semitism that we are seeing here is disgusting, despicable, and it's a fundamental crack truly in our nation that we just can't sit here and call evil, evil, and that you have a former president that is trying to make an excuse for barbaric, disgusting, despicable, Terrorism. Why is it so hard uh, to understand the importance of restoring the sanctions to cut off their money? You know, I don't know. We... Is, I mean, money is pretty much everything in this game because of the financing. I mean, I know they can plot, but if, you know, Trump was not perfect. I understand that. But Trump basically bankrupted Iran, okay? Correct. Um, why is it so? The Senate is. I'm surprised. Joni Ernst has been on many times. She's a wonderful lady. She was trying to build a bipartisan coalition for restoring the sanctions, but it doesn't appear to be happening. Well, that's and absolutely what we need to do. We've yeah. got to go back to maximum pressure. When we're talking yes. with G7, we have to get them to. We had a hearing the other day in the Senate Banking Committee. I got to serve that day as ranking member. It was about these sanctions. Mm. We know drying up economically, Iran is the way, it's, a, it's the path to peace. Mm. It worked under Trump. Obviously, you were able to see him do the work you did that you just alluded to with the Abraham Accords mm. and others. Um, so we know how to achieve this. Why in the world people are wanting to go backwards is beyond me. Um, 
Let's turn to the book. Okay, we, let's we do it. Talk let's politics it. as much as we want. God calls us to do hard things. Right. Uh, I was able to read about 100 pages of it. It's a very interesting book. Thank um, you. What do you mean God calls us to do hard things, Katie Britt? Tell me. I will, I will tell you. <laughs> the, the title actually came from my yep. children. The reason yep. that I ran, the reason I wrote the book is for my kids. It's for the next generation. It's for mm -hmm. preserving the American dream, fighting for the fundamental values and principles this nation was founded on, faith, freedom, um, prosperity, you know, your family, the whole thing. And so my daughter, my son set me down first when I went to, we were talking about running for the Senate. I was looking for a way out. Mm. And my son said, no, mom, you got to do this. I talk about it in the book. You weren't the favorite. Uh, no, I right. had an opponent polling at about 65% sitting, sitting congressman. I was polling at two. And Larry, you've been around politics enough mm. to know you put your name on the ballot and you get to four. Uh, <laughs> so the fact that I could only get to two is uh, remarkable, but not in a way that inspires confidence. But then my daughter set me down afterwards and she said, mom, you got to run. And I said, baby, I don't think you understand what a hard thing this is. And without talking about the polling, without talking about the fact that my husband and I would both have to resign from our jobs, mm -hmm. without talking about the fact people said it was impossible for a 39-year-old unknown female to get elected in Alabama, I just said, baby, it's a really hard thing. And she looked at me, Larry, and she said, well, mama, doesn't God call you to do hard things? Oh, wow. That's and wonderful. so, and when how old is she? She is now 14. Boy, At the time, great. she was just turning 12. Um, and so, between her, my, my son's wisdom, hers, and knowing that every generation has been called to do hard things. And I believe that each and every one of us have a different arena. We have a different purpose that God calls us to. And so, this book talks about life lessons. Larry, it talks about my failures. Um, I think people too often talk about their peaks and not their valleys when mm. God really calls Carves you up and prepares and, you. And faith helps you beat the fear of failure. That's exactly. I mean, right. isn't that what faith That's is? It. God is on your side. That's it. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but if we think it's true, if we believe it to it be is. the case, that's what it really is matters. And if you ask God, He will walk with you, and that is what we've asked Him to do in this journey. And that's we've got to get back to that as a nation. Mm. You know, get back ah, to these principles right. that make our country so great, and be prepared because we need everyone to step into mm. the arena. Not everyone's arena is the U.S. Senate. Yeah. Um, everyone's is different, but uh, we've got to. This helps just tell life lessons, teach our kids the values that we hold so dear that I think make this country so great and that we have to make sure that we hold on to. All right. We're going to take a quick break. During the break, you're going to autograph that book for me. <laughs> Thank We're you. We're going to say once again how wonderful it is to have Senator Katie Britt here on the show. Pick up a copy of Katie's new book, God Calls Us to Do Hard Things, Lessons from the Alabama Wiregrass. That's out today. That is out today. One click on Amazon or wherever you want to buy it, folks. Thank you, Senator.